I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. I am joined today by Ronan, one of my Morelia Bredley. Today is Training Tuesday for May 25th, 2021, and you're going to get to see me working with about half of our Morelia Bredley doing some target training review with most of them because that is a foundation behavior that it's important they keep up on. Because once they learn to do targeting, I can use that to do so many other behaviors with them. And one of them is an emergency recall. So I've actually used it several times with our snakes when they've gotten loose and I have not intended for them to be loose. And I've had to recall them out from under enclosures or out from behind enclosures or out from areas where they are not supposed to be and it's worked very well. So every time I feed the animals, I review their target training with them, even if it's just a simple session. But you are gonna get to see a couple of the Bradley do complete behaviors. That just means more complicated behaviors, like completely shifting out of their enclosures and stationing on something or positioning their bodies in a specific way. Katesh is in a large enclosure relative to her size. It's five feet long and two feet tall and two feet deep. So I have been just targeting her up and down her enclosure from one end to the other and to the enclosure threshold. And she's just learning to come out the enclosure door and she's doing a great job. Shepard is doing the same thing, except he's gone several steps further. He will actually target all the way out of his enclosure and onto an activity station. However, tonight, I'm not really sure what he was doing when we started. He was just staring up into the air. So I first had to get his attention and make sure that he saw the target. And then I asked him to target from the end of his enclosure where he started out there all the way to the other side of his enclosure. And it took him a few minutes to orient and make his way across the enclosure. So you'll see that he crosses the middle of the enclosure and then he figures out that he wants to get up onto a few of the items in his enclosure to make his way over to the target. And I mean, he does fine, there's no issue. I think sometimes as humans, they don't go as fast as we would like them to. And we just need to remember to be patient because they're figuring out how to traverse the terrain that we're asking them to maneuver over. And he did absolutely a great job. Tanavik was inside a tub that's inside his enclosure and then he was inside a cardboard box inside the tub that's inside his enclosure. It's his favorite hiding spot when he's not out in the open. So I first had to make sure he saw the target and then get him to come out of the cardboard box and then get him to come out of the tub. And he didn't have any problem with that. And I realized as I was targeting him across that we couldn't see him on camera. So I changed gears and decided to ask him to target upwards towards that rock that's in his enclosure. And he did just fine, no problem. I wasn't asking him to do anything complicated other than to just target out of hiding for me. And as soon as he did that and approached the target, he got his reinforcement. Laurel was actually facing away from me, looking at the other end of her enclosure, the opposite end from where I was standing. So once again, I had to make sure she saw the target and then she had to turn 180 degrees and then move her whole body in the opposite direction from where she had been headed. And she did just fine and she approached the target like she always does. And I was really surprised that she was striking at the target because she is one of my more experienced target trained snakes. And I don't know that she has ever struck at the target before, so I'm not sure why she did tonight, unless all of that maneuvering frustrated her to the point that when she got to the target, she just wanted immediate reinforcement. But I did ask her to pause 
and I waited until she paused there several seconds before I delivered her reinforcement. Now, Triangula is the other snake that oftentimes trains with Laurel, their sisters, their clutch mates. And I'm asking Triangula to do a complete shift out of her enclosure and to shift onto this step stool or this ladder. I don't know that she's ever been on this particular ladder before, but she's an experienced target trained snake. She has shifted out onto scales, onto tubs, onto many other objects. And so she's one of the snakes that can generalize this targeting behavior and understands that no matter what object is outside of her enclosure, that she's to follow the target and shift out onto it. But not only that, I'm asking her to position onto this station in a specific way. And that's because I want her body completely out of the enclosure. And that's for several reasons. If I was gonna weigh her, I would want her body completely on the scale. And if I'm cleaning the enclosure or doing maintenance, I obviously want her body completely out of the enclosure. Or if I was gonna transport her, I would want her body completely in the transport tub. Telemachus starts out in his sky hide at the far upper left. Now watch his body language. You can tell exactly when he first notices the target. And his whole demeanor changes, his body language changes. And once he sees the target, I basically can take it away, stand up for a minute, move to the other end of the enclosure and wait for him to just come across on his own, which he did. Then I show him the target again and I ask him to come forward towards the target. And he understands the reinforcement does not come directly from the target, but from off to the side. So he anticipated that and had already looked at the target and then was looking off to the side. Now this is Zelenka, who I'm also gonna ask to do a complete shifting behavior. And this is only the second time I've ever had him shift out onto this portable uh, pet gate or baby gate. And this is just another object that I can utilize to shift the snakes out onto that makes it easy for me to move them around. And there is some bonus material at the end of this video where you're gonna get to see Zelenka's very first session ever shifting out onto this gate, if you're interested in seeing that. But what's different about this gate than the ladders or the scales or the activity stands or the tubs that he has shifted out onto before is that the gate is smooth. So it's a, it's a smooth surface. There's nothing for him to grip onto with his scales. And it's also a narrow surface and this part that he's shifting out onto here is a straight line. So you'll see that he's being very cautious and slow about it. And part of that is because it's difficult for him to grip onto it. It's a, it's a very smooth surface. It's smooth wood, it's not smooth metal, but it's still not very grippy. And so then what I wanna do to help him is I want to have him come across it at an angle a little bit so that he's not just trying to balance on that one straight edge. So I'm having his head and neck come across onto that other straight edge. So now he's at an angle and he's got two points of contact. And then when I deliver the reinforcement, I'm gonna hang on to it for just a few extra seconds on the tongs to help support and balance him until I am sure that he has a secure grip onto this station. And then it's easy for me to pick this whole station up and move it out of the way so that I can get to his enclosure or I could set this on a scale if I needed to weigh him. Now Tilly's an interesting snake. She has always been strikey. She's never bitten me, but she would if I gave her the opportunity. You can see right there that she did not hesitate to go for my fingers through the glass. But then notice her body language and her demeanor change when she sees the target. She knows exactly what she's doing and she totally starts concentrating on the activity and she's focused on the behavior that she's supposed to do. And she's taking her time, she's being deliberate. 
she's really paying attention. Look at her tail. She's just very, very focused on this activity. And she approaches the target, tongue flicks at it, does everything she's supposed to do, pauses at it, and she doesn't hesitate to take her reinforcement. She did a great job, but that is typical Tilly. Like she always is striky at the beginning, but then she really settles into the work and focuses once we get started. Worf has decided that he likes it under his water dish. When he's not out perching and roaming around his enclosure or basking, he feels very secure underneath that water dish. And lately it's been difficult for me to target him completely out. Now, since we've done this session where we were just practicing targeting him to the threshold of his enclosure, he has come out twice and he's now decided that he likes coming out and roaming around on one of the activity stations again. But in this particular session, we were just practicing getting him to come out from under his water dish to the enclosure threshold. And he's another one that understands that the reinforcement comes from elsewhere. So I really had to make him pause at the target and interact with it for several seconds before I delivered the reinforcement because he initially approached that target and then immediately looked to the side. So now we're joining Triangula for repetition number two during the same training session. And my intent here was to target her back into her enclosure. And you'll see that she immediately notices the target and responds to it. So I ask her to follow the target towards her enclosure opening. And she's doing a great job. She's very fluent and confident in this behavior. But notice the more hesitant that she gets, the closer we get to her enclosure. And right here, she's saying, nope, I do not want to go back into my enclosure. And the reason I know that is the issue and not the targeting behavior is because when I ask her to target again, she does. And when I slightly move the target in a different direction and don't ask her to go to her enclosure, she does the targeting behavior. She interacts with the target and then she readily takes her reinforcement. And so if she wasn't hungry anymore, if she had been sa satiated, she wouldn't have taken the food. If she didn't wanna do the targeting behavior, she wouldn't have done the targeting behavior. What she really didn't want was to go back into her enclosure. And she eventually went back into her enclosure on her own after she was done roaming around a little bit. Now this is Shepard's second session and he was already coming out of his enclosure, which I wasn't ready for him to do. I didn't have an activity station or anything ready for him to shift out onto. So all I could really do here was just ask him to come out further over his enclosure threshold and pause at the target. He did a great job and I delivered his reinforcement. And as I said earlier, he has come out of his enclosure onto an activity station and I know that he's not afraid to do that. Now, Mrs. Peel, I could tell that I was not going to get her to come over her enclosure threshold or shift out tonight, although she has done that many times in the past. But the reason I say I could tell that is the back half of her body was securely anchored in her enclosure and she was not moving that back half of her body at all. So I acknowledge that. I just ask her to interact with the target and reinforce her in her enclosure. X452 always starts every session by striking at the target. So all I expect her to do is to not strike at the target. So I am just reinforcing her looking at the target, being in the presence of the target and not striking at it. Once she does that for several seconds, then she gets her reinforcement. Now, Bendu is fairly new at target training and he started target training when he was already over two years old, which I find it takes them a little longer to catch on to when they start once they're over about eight to 12 months old. 
So first I had to make sure he saw the target and then I'm asking him to target down from this shelf that he was on. But he doesn't quite understand to follow the target. He understands the target means he's gonna eat and he understands that he has to kind of go towards the target. And he's just gotten to the point where he's not striking at the target, but he doesn't quite understand to move his whole body and follow the target to a location. And so we're kind of in this intermediate stage with him where I am reinforcing him for acknowledging the target and moving towards the target with some part of his body and not striking at the target. Now, Sabine is relatively new. This is only her fourth target training session. Now, she's up there next to her sky hide behind, behind these leaves. And so if you look really closely, you'll see her head start to emerge. And she's also very tiny. She was just hatched in August of 2020, and this was filmed in May of 2021. So she's not very big, but I screwed up here and didn't realize this is only her fourth session. I should still be pairing the target with food and I didn't. I'm showing her the target and I'd already trained all of these more advanced animals and I'm expecting her to approach the target and follow it. And then it dawned on me that I was supposed to be pairing it with food. So I reinforced her for coming towards it at all and looking at it. Now Castiel is also relatively new. This is his fifth target training session. And he is back there kind of up on top of his human hide in the back of his enclosure. And he sees the target, he comes towards it. He falls off his humid hide. He didn't strike at the target, he just fell a little bit. And then he follows the target to his enclosure threshold. And as he's done one more session than Sabine has, and has just picked this up a little bit more quickly than her, I was purposefully asking him to follow the target before delivering reinforcement. Lorca is almost three years old. Um, he'll be three years old in just a couple of months and he's always been a shy snake and just a less outgoing Bradley than some of the others. So I'm asking him just simply to target down off of his shelf to approach the target and interact with it without striking and then he's going to earn his reinforcement for that. And he does it really nicely here. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. I just thought some of you might be interested to see Zelinka's very, very first time ever being asked to shift out onto this baby gate. He had never seen this baby gate before and I'm asking him to generalize his targeting and his shifting and his stationing behavior all to come out onto this gate. And he did an excellent job. And remember what I said earlier in the video that this is a smooth surface and he's also trying to balance on this single edge. And so just like in the other session, and especially because this was his first time ever interacting with this particular piece of furniture, I really um, allowed him to take his time and I tried to help him a little bit by moving the target so that he would maneuver his body in such a way that once I delivered the reinforcement, I thought he would be able to grip onto this gate easily. So I asked him to lower his head so that I could deliver the reinforcement between the slats thinking that then he would coil around the top edge of the baby gate and sort of hang down and eat that way. That was my plan. Here I'm delivering the reinforcement and it didn't work out exactly how I envisioned because he ended up coiling around one of the vertical beams on the baby gate. But then he took the back part of his body and he did wrap it around the top edge of the gate. So he was securely attached to this gate um, and there he wraps the tail tip around it as well 
so I wasn't worried about him falling. And then I was able to move the gate out of the way and do a complete enclosure clean while he was eating. And then I just simply moved the gate back and he shifted himself back inside.